Mama said, no, my do what's going on. Keep your head up, keep your head so up. So what if folks talk about you? They talk about Jesus. When I was 19, I tried to commit suicide. That was my third time. Yeah. So yeah, I tried to take my life. When I think about what I've been through, been through, been through, been through. I'm so thankful I made it through. Made it, made it, I made it. I put it all behind ya. Yeah. Ain't nothing in my way yet. Yeah. So Deze, what's good, bro? I just want to uh, welcome you to the Tom Bomb Podcast. What's up, man? Not much. Um, I discovered you from your song "I'm Good." Uh, I watched a music video. Um, super touching song, super deep song. Uh, thought you had a beautiful voice. Um, the first thing I want to ask you, bro, if you could just let everybody know where, where you're from and how it was growing up in your area. So yeah, I'm from Victoria, Virginia. Um, growing up in Victoria, it's really country. Um, if you watch the heat of the night, it's the perfect example of <laughs> how country it is. Or maybe uh P Valley, Chocolisa, even though it's a fiction, you know, city or whatever, but um that's pretty that pretty much explains like my um hometown. Um, just a lot of churches and trees and shit like that. So um yeah. So, uh, growing up there, what were you listening to musically, like, as a kid? Like, what was being played, like, inside your household or, like, out on the streets? And then what did you start to listen to when you got a hold of the ox chord yourself? Um, so I listened to a lot of Southern Soul, a lot of R&B music, uh, stuff like uh, uh, Ray Charles and Roy C., uh, Peggy Scott Adams, uh, Marv Cease, uh, Marvin Gaye, Luther Vandross, uh, Jill Levert, the OJs, uh, New Edition, you know, <laughs> the list goes on. Mary J. Blige. Classic, yeah. So um, how old were you when you think you got the idea in your head that, oh, maybe I want to, you know, make my own music and maybe I want to try doing this for a living? Um, I was probably about a preteen, you know, I was probably about, about 10, but now about, about 12, yeah, about 12 or 13 and start thinking about it. I'm like, well, I, I mean, I could do this, you know? Um, so I, I decided as I got older, you know, shopping in my craft and things like that, um, because it takes more than just having a decent voice or a songwriting um, ability to, uh, basically making it in the music industry. Yeah, no, I agree with that 100%. Um, talk about your voice, though. Um, that's the first thing I noticed, honestly, when I when I heard your song. Um, just how how it's a beautiful voice. Um, and Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. There's no lie to tell. You have a beautiful voice. Um, were, could you always sing growing up as a child, or was it something you had to work on, or is it just something that comes naturally? Yeah, I could always, I could always blow. Um, <laughs> yeah, I could, I could always sing. Uh, when I was five years old, I was in um, children's choir. Um, um, and then I went from children's choir, and they shortly moved me to um, the adult choir at the church. So I could always sing. I was always a gospel kid um, and stuff like that. Um, when it came down to singing uh, my own material that I wrote, that didn't begin to happen until I was like um late teens, like 17, 19 type of stuff. Um and then I didn't begin to showcase it until a year ago. Um now I'm showcasing my talent, me as a singer, I've been doing that since I was five. That goes back to the gospel, but when it comes down to my own written material, I didn't start showcasing that um until um twenty twenty two. Yeah, talk talk about the the process, right? For because you've always been a great singer. I think people in your life have always noticed that. You you've noticed that from the attention you've gotten since you you said you've been five. You know, you got moved up so quick, and uh, in the church and everything. Um, why do you think it took so long for for you to you know want to put your own music out to the world? 
Um, I believe the reason why it took so long is because growing up where I'm from, um, if you uh if you're a church kid, um and you don't really want to be um a gospel singer, um, or live the godly way, um, because we, of course we're all young when we're young. Some, you know, have a calling to be a pastor, but is that their calling or is, did their parents put that up on them to do because yeah. they are pastor, you know? So for me, um, it was a bit different. Um, I knew I always wanted to sing. I always knew I wanted to entertain. However, um, being in a small town, it's kind of impossible to do. Um, naming all those artists that I've named and even some of the biggest artists in the industry today, they come from a city. I come from the sticks. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, you know, of course, it's the 90s. It's different. It wasn't like I was, you know, the 90s and I'm Mary J. Blige or R. Kelly in, you know, Chicago or something, you know, and the right person hear me and, you know, or Detroit, Motown or whatever. So... And there was no internet kind of, at that time either. Huh? There was no internet at that time either. Right. So I, I think technology um, plays a big part on, on why and also me relocating and growing up in life and experiencing more and more with life and things like that. So, yeah. Um, when did you get the confidence like in yourself to, to drop your music publicly? Because, you know, there's a, there's a big difference from like sitting to people, you know, or, or sitting like in a group of people. But once, once you put something out online, you know, anyone who's ever known you could say something about it. Anybody across the world that sees it could say whatever they want about it. Uh, when did you really get that confidence in yourself to be like, okay, like this is what I'm doing and I want to tell my story and, you know, I'll, I'll take whatever comes with it. Life. That's the best way I can explain that one. Yeah, no, that that's a great answer. Yep. Uh, who, who would you say are some of your, uh, your influences in the way, in like the way you make music or just the way you go about uh, your writing process? Um, I would like to say, uh, Mary J. Blige. Um, I would like to say Fantasia. Um, I would like to say, um, R. Kelly, even though, you know, his little situation or whatever, but Great R. Kelly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, a few other people, um, in the industry from the past now, um, Jay LaVert, uh, Chris Brown, um, let's see here, um, this um, singer, her, um, how she writes and her writing ability. Um, Pat Patrice Russian, um, which is the one who wrote, you know, You Remind Me and, you know, Forget Me Nots and classics, you know. Um, just a, a few other writers um, that are new today. Um, trying to think of some more that are kind of new today who, um, write, Seven Streeter, like Seven Streeter, you know, she's a good writer. So I would say like a few of them inspired me, like as far as the writing process. Um, but as far as, vo as vocals, I would say, you know, like I said, as far as males, keep, keep it short because we ain't got that type of time. <laughs> but the influences. So I would say like people like uh, Jay LaVert is one of my main, um, main uh, male vocalists. Uh, Johnny Gill. Um, of course, uh, again, R. Kelly, um, Joe, um, Kenny Lattimore, um, Genuine, um, Dino from H-Town, you know, the one lead singer, you know, knocking the boots, uh, Kenny G from Intro, who wrote Mary J. Blige's uh, You Remind Me, he re he wrote uh, Reminisce for Mary. Yeah. Um, I'd, lo I'd love yeah. to see your, I'd love to listen to your playlist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, it is a lot. It, it's a lot of people that inspire me. There's only a few today who, uh, who inspire me because music is different. It's so different now. So, yeah. Yeah. Um. So obviously you're an independent artist at this point. Um. What do you think that you need most personally to take your career to the next level? Um, I feel like I need more connections. I need more connections and I need a bigger audience outside of um, Virginia. Um, I mean, a lot of people be like, well, you know, you can do that through technology. You can you can easily put a green screen behind you and, and, and tweak things to be what it what you want it to be. 
However, meeting the person in person, actually like singing for them in person is what really gets your rocks off. That's what yeah. really gets you, you know, um, because there's, there's, you can't run or hide from it. You know, you hear every bits and parts of what's right and what's wrong and what, what need work, what don't need work. Are you ready? You know, so I, I think it's more of a, um, I need to be Older, seen more right? outside of, yeah, need to be seen more outside of Virginia or outside of the 757 area. And that's kind of like what's been happening, but in a slower pace, because all my podcasts, most of my podcast interviews are from out of state. Um, most of my um, artist articles, they're from out of state. So it's kind of like a lot of play, even my plays, they're mostly from out of the fucking country, actually. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, they're here, but it, it's a, di a little different in the UK and Paris and shit like that. So, yeah. Yeah, they, they listen where they listen, and they love you where they love you. You can't control right. it. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so talk about um, you know, people seeing you in person. Um, I, I it must be a great experience. Um, so you've been, you know, playing in Vir you're uh, you're about to play in a show in Virginia, uh, and start you know traveling outside of the states. Um, <clears throat> talk about uh the transition from you know like making music in a studio or or in your room or wherever someone makes it to to being on stage and having stage presence because that's a huge uh a huge jump and I think a lot of artists don't talk about that enough. Okay, so yeah, um how I do it in the studio is different from when I perform live. Yeah. Um I think that's kind of a, a little obvious. Um cuz like uh when I'm in the studio I had to learn how to um, do the do enough, like do what you're supposed to do, but don't overdo it, you know, and stuff like that. Um, because I'm more of a live singer. If I can afford a band and had some true, real, serious musicians, I have a fucking band. I won't ever go to the studio. Yeah. Um, I would go to be sit in on other people's sessions or maybe do some side work for them or, you know, be a listening ear or whatever, but I probably would never go to the studio because I feel like certain things can be taught and certain things can't, you know, it goes back from when I was a kid, I was always running out in the public, um, running out in crowds and stuff like that, singing and, and stuff like that in front of hundreds and thousands of people, you know, always did that. But to do it from my own music and in front of strangers was something different. Yeah. So when you do something different like that and nobody in the room that you know or, or know past the year and they rock with you, you got you got something going on. You know, every event and every um, audience you go to, even the thugs got guns on them or whatever, you know, like, yo, dog, like, yo. And I'm like, you felt that? I, I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... Yeah. When you do stuff like that and you your heart is pure with it, you'll be amazed what, what can come out of it. So, but the transition in the studio, being that me and my producer got a good relationship, I actually got the phone with him like probably like an hour ago. Um, it runs smoothly because they already know, I know you're going to act a fool live. They, 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 you, I know you're going to act a And that's where I mostly shine at. So yeah. I do what I can in the studio and and already in my mind, as I'm singing in the studio, I'm already coming up with how I want to perform it live. Yeah. So. Yeah. No. Um. I wish I had the opportunity. Um. To hear. Well, hopefully in the future, uh, sometime soon, I'll have the opportunity to to see you live and in person. Um. Because the first time I heard your voice, it was, uh, you know the feeling when when you see somebody and you're like, damn, like, they they got it. Like you just have the natural talent. <laughs> It's kind of like the first time I ever, you know, heard like a Rod Wave song. I was just like, "Oh shit!" Like he just ha he just has it. Like you, there's yeah. no deny there's no denying it. And um, that's the same way I felt when I discovered you. Um, and when I listened to "I'm Good," L let's get into that song a little bit. Um, obviously the the start of the song's um pretty detailed, pretty um uh a sensitive topic. Um. Talk about being that open um in your music. Was that is that hard for you? Or um and I and I want to say this too. Um it's appreciated for people like me, right? Uh people with mental health problems or have it had addiction problems in the past, um, or know somebody going through it. 
Um, t- talk about being that honest and open in your music. Is that hard for you? And also, I just want to thank you for that because that helps other people get through. Actually, it wasn't hard because in real life, that's just how I am. Um, I know like um, sometimes like talking on the phone, especially when you never met a person or communicating like through uh, text message or emails, things can get like mis- misconstrued. But I've always been that type of person that, you know, I don't give a fuck. You know, like you, I, I, <laughs> I would say like, you know, uh, well, you know, I hear you or this is how I feel or whatever, blah, 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 blah. I've always been an upfront and honest and real person. Um, and I, I think that kind of con- conflicts with the industry because a lot of people, they put on to be from somewhere or they put on to be like they've been through something to try to sell, sell a product. Yeah. And in reality, you know what I'm saying? That's why every podcast interview I do, anything I do, everything lines up the way it's supposed to line up because you can check the resources, you can check the people, you can check with this, you can check with that. Um, Even for the promo for the music video, I'm good. Those court papers and those warrants and and all those pictures and that shit is real. Yeah, that's real stuff. Like throughout my twenties, I was going through hell. So my thing is like you know, um, the alcoholism and and things like that. All that stuff was real. I couldn't stop drinking when I lost my mom um, back in twenty fourteen. Yeah. So it, it it began to be a different you know thing, but. The hard part for me was to not to show the world or worry about the world thing. The hard part w- was for me is to was to uh, record it. Yeah, because yeah. when you when you when you can be an emotional person and you've been through something, you have to reflect over all of that and also keep it professional with with with, with the twist. So that was the hard part. That was the hardest part getting through the recording process because I was crying during the um, recording process. Also, um, performing it live. If I would drop my head or whatever, you know, I'm crying. You probably can't tell through the vocals, but at the same time, if you know me, know me, know me, know me, you be like, yeah, he done went there. Yeah, you know, uh, um, you know, and then they begin to cry. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so that wasn't hard telling the world, you know, because I always had that, you know, they gonna talk about, they talk about Jesus Christ, they gonna talk about you, so it don't matter. Yeah, and I think um, I think your fans or you know anyone who watches this and then goes and watches that video can appreciate it, and especially live. I think you know knowing because you said it perfectly earlier, right? Like you want to relate to an artist you're a fan of, you want to relate to the person's music, and like the shit that you're talking about, no nobody could ever say that's not real. You're you know he's putting on a performance. You know what I mean? Like it's all real. Like and um, the way you carry yourself about it, I think it's super genuine. It, it, it's it. There's an attraction to you for people to want to listen to you. Yeah. Um, and I didn't know. I didn't. Honestly, I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't know what to think after releasing the song. Even not, I I cared, but I didn't care if that makes sense. Yeah. No, I get it. So, releasing it was it was completely different from. Any other track, I mean, every damn track I release is different, but this one in particular, this is speaking on my life, like chapters of my life. You know, it's like telling a story. So I didn't know how people would take it, you know, because like he went through that. Like, oh my God, like what? Not you. No, nah, it ain't no way in the hell, dog. You, you a fool. Because to meet me, I'm not a depressing person. Yeah, I'm- you're very uplifted <laughs> guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a depressing person. So, you know, to meet me, it's like, in the way the hell you went through all that. It's like, I don't wear it. I don't wear it. So. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, once again, I want to thank you, bro, uh, for just being open and honest in your work. Uh, you know, it really touched me or something when I heard it. And uh, anyone I've sent it to uh, really enjoyed it as well. Um, so I ask everybody this question, uh, no matter how famous they are or, or underground, um, if you could have three dream features from any artist, from any genre, dead or alive, who would they be? Shit. Um, <laughs> damn, just three. No, just, yeah. um, so uh, Prince will be number one. Ooh, fire choice. Yeah, Prince will be number one. Um, Jelvert will be number two. 
And this is not just from a singer or entertainer, this is also from a writer's point of view with me as well. Put, yeah. Put this. Um, and alive, um, Missy Elliott. Ooh, wow, yeah. that'd be great. I, I would say Missy Elliott because I, I wish, I wish <laughs> she would get back to doing, um, producing R and B tracks and stuff like that. I, I read somewhere why she stopped, and um, I think she would get back to it soon. I mean, I'm from Virginia, not from the seven five seven, but I'm from the forty four Victoria, Virginia. But Portsmouth, Virginia, her hometown is literally fifteen minutes away from Virginia Beach. <laughs> That's crazy, yeah. So, even though she's not here, but still, you know, I would like to work with her, so. Yeah, for sure. Um, So, where do you see your career a day from today? Or a year from today, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tomorrow? <laughs> um, Hopefully on the road. Um, I, I don't get me wrong. I, I like streams and streams is cool. But if you actually know the um, justice of the music, music industry, you can get no fucking money off on damn streams. You gonna get money off of touring. You're going to get money off of um, endorsement deals. You get money off of that. The, the streams will get you notoriety. Yeah. You know, you know, if you didn't buy them, you know, but <laughs> that's, that's true. Hey, I mean, <laughs> a lot of but, fake numbers out there. Right, you know, and people don't know that the record label can, when somebody's trying to sign them, they know that, they can see that. And some of them care, some of them don't care, but my thing is like, um, I I can see myself touring. I hope to see myself touring, um, opening up for people. I'm not too shabby or too big-headed to open up for major artists. I would, because I, I like being in the background. I'm, I'm actually a part of a, a project now, me and a few other artists, or whatever, if you stroll through my page, you will see it. It's called the um the full package um Virginia. Um, yeah, I'm gonna ask you about that next. Yeah, so um we you know me and a few other artists involved in it, but we like to be we're not in it if that makes sense. We're not we're not cont contestants. We are the team. We're the team going through submissions and you know and pushing it and stuff like that. So, but we're not um, contestants of it. Cause that's been a lot of talking down here about um well Desi's an artist, Nina Nicole's an artist, and and Nico's an art, you know, artist other people, Zeke's an artist, but are they a part of it? No, we're not a part of it. Yeah. We are creating something to get something in the artist pocket because in Virginia, um, especially this area is kind of shabby. Um and 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 it's kind of clicked up. So they don't like to um give other people props who are good you know, or who not good, but they still trying to get out there, but they give it to their friends, you know, yeah. like favorites and shit. And you can't grow as an artist. I don't want to always perform for my family. I don't always want to perform for people that I know. That shit is whack. Yeah. You know, whether I'm getting paid for it or not, at the end of the day, how am I going to grow as an artist? Of course, you're going to tell me I sound good. You've been telling me that since I was fucking six years old. Like, that don't mean nothing to me. I mean, it does, but in reality, I need to hear this from the world. And not just through a, a, a phone or a screen. I need to know this from the world. If I really want it, you know? So. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And, um, yeah, I've always been, uh, you know, kind of on your side of, of those things. Um, I don't understand, like, artists that have, you know, notoriety or, or power in the city they're from. Why? They they'll message someone who's who's you know a lower artist and be like yo your shit's dope keep grinding but they won't reach out and just put it like get on their song or just you know shout what? them out like they they need you know the industry or or other big people to 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 post somebody first before they can do it you know uh, I think it, it makes the city look better too if if yeah. someone brings up another artist you know what I mean um, but but from my understanding. Um from people from LA and people from Atlanta, New York, Jersey, Maryland, Philly, you know, all these big ass states, you know what I'm saying? Um, and dope states when it comes down to hip hop, R and B, soul music, all this stuff. Unfortunately, Virginia, to, to, from my knowledge, Virginia is the only city to do that stupid shit. That yeah, is exactly- they're, they're one of them, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, not city, but state that do yeah. that or whatever. Um, yeah. Because Missy Elliott and all these other people, Pharrell, all of them had to move for people to pay attention to them from their own city. So they didn't make it because of their, their um, state and city. They made it because they left. And then they want, now the city want them to put them back on. <laughs> no, y'all thought we was weirdos. Y'all thought this. Y'all thought we was whack. You thought this. And, and now you got these motherfuckers on, all these people on that's in the game now still sampling their shit from the 90s. Man, come on. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> Crazy, right? Um, So what's next for you? Uh, What can fans expect from you or people that discover you through this podcast? Uh, What's coming out from you in the next uh, few months and what can people expect from you? Uh, more good vibes. More good vibes. Um, For now, I'm just going to continue to push um, um, good music video. Um, And uh, I got a few private events and other events going on. So more performances that will be posted on my Instagram account. Um, Hopefully I will try to get out this other single that I had performed for the first time at an open mic event and stuff like that. It went pretty well. Um, but um, I'm trying to, every time I drop something, I always try to do it in a different way. Um, because it shows growth and it shows, you know, um, that you're serious about your craft. Yeah. Um, so this, this music video, and I always like to work with different people. I don't like to get, uh, I mean, create good relationships with people, but I don't like to get, and stay in one lane with dealing with certain people because you don't grow like that. You know, you you, you still keep them, you still deal with them, but there's nothing wrong with moving. You don't get too comfortable, it's business. So, you know, but at the same time, um, more performances, um, maybe um, another single. Uh, yeah, so that's about it. And also the full package, you know, me being a part of that, um, as a uh, as a team member and things like that, so that's pretty much it. But yeah, yeah, that's dope, bro. Um, I'm really looking forward to your next song, and uh, I'm hoping you know maybe in the future, not too long away, uh, we'll get an album from you. Yeah, I, you know, I was <laughs> I was approached with the album thing, and uh, the hard part about an album for me is um, I have so many different sounds. Yeah. And it's 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 so hard to um when you're in one lane and for instance, like if you are a trap rapper or you are a jazz vocalist only, it's so easy to, you know, come up with ten tracks or whatever. But when you can do certain stuff, um, and so many different stuff, it's kinda hard to come up with with that. Cause you gotta go to this producer, that producer, or maybe just one producer, but maybe that mix sounds different from that mix or this and that because of how to beat it. So it's just, it it takes a longer process. So I probably would say like a EP might be in the future before the album because it's really easy to, you know, come up with three or four songs um, that's under 30 minutes. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? Um, Converse to a whole damn album, an uh, album. But <laughs> fucking yeah, no. believe it should be all over the place. Yeah, I think I think that makes more more sense for you, right? Because you are so versatile. Like, you you have I'm good, and then you have the song floor, like just two right. totally different lands, but yeah, they're both great songs. Like, and and you make yeah. it so good. So yeah, I think maybe an EP uh of your different styles would be the best approach. Yeah, um, uh, but I have noticed like throughout time, um, since the release of I'm good, um, I'm good has basically done things quicker than any of my songs. I mean, I'm not going to say quicker, quicker, but it was a confirmation for me because within two weeks of the song was released, it um, got played in London. Um, out of all the promo and uh, performances of it and stuff like that, over 8,000 views, yeah. less than a month. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, wait a minute here now, wait a minute. And then I have people hit me up you know, I haven't talked to in a long time about some personal shit that I remember when we were kids, you know, about what they've been through and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I was waiting on you to do gospel. And then people thought in their mind that I was going to do gospel. So they thought I was, <laughs> that's why I didn't really want to do a gospel contemporary track. That's another yeah. reason why I wanted to kind of like touch it and go on to the next Yeah, you want to show your talents in other ways. I get it. <laughs> but it's like now, 
I think it was a confirmation for me because that song has done tremendous things in a short period. It haven't even been too much, dog. Yeah. And that this is like my fourth or third inter out of state interview. Yeah. So it's like I I don't know, you know, and it like I said, I think it's just gonna be my main lane, honestly, like I told you before, is R and B, uh, soul music and gospel. That is my main lane. I, I literally go in with that. I feel I can reach people with that. Now the funny side of me, the ratchet side of me, uh the hip hop side of me or whatever, the comical side of me, that's definitely on um on a pop and house type of, you know, vibe, hip hop type of vibe. So, but um I'm good has done make amazing things. Like like I said, when I dropped the music video, I didn't expect people to <clears throat> watch that video like that. That's my second video, and that video has overshadowed my first music video, which is about to be 10 years since I released it, 10 years, which is about to be a year since I released the first music video um, I did, was, which was, um, it's like that, yeah. which is an R&B and hip hop, <laughs> you know, collage type of thing. So, but, um, but yeah, man, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, no. Exactly what you said, bro. The the I'm good video. Uh, it touched me as soon as I heard it, bro. And I, I had to reach out to you. I was like, first off, the voice, right, and then and then the story. But then you just see the, your your talent is so like to me at least. It's so it's just like in plain sight. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just like maybe you just need the right person to see it. That's what I think. Right. And I think you know I see a lot of artists like that. Like how are people not? You know what I mean? Like they're better than a lot of people that have a following or have this or have that and they just need the right exposure or maybe the right person to get in contact with them and help them you know get the exposure that they need um but before we get out of here bro um if you could just uh pronounce your artist name for everybody and just spell it out and then let them know uh where to find you uh on your social medias and um how they could find your music and the mic's yours after that okay cool um so you can find me at uh Deze underscore music. Um so you pronounce my stage name as Deze. So yeah, Des D E Z and then Zay. Z A E, but it's together. Deze. Um my real name is Cordez. It's actually spelled with a C, not a K. I just like to mess with people. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's so, funny but... actually. <laughs> Um, there's no T and none of my damn names. Uh, people always put Cortez whenever we're just having a conversation or texting because Cortez is more common than Cordez. I get it. But um, yeah, so you can find all my music on all streaming platforms. Um, Spotify, YouTube, um, Amazon Music, Apple Music, Deezer, um, everywhere. You can find it everywhere. Um I have five singles. Uh, one is called "It's Like That," featuring um Poker Face, um which is uh, um R and B and hip hop, um vibe. Nostalgia has a music video to it as well, which is on YouTube. Um, actually, I, well, I did mention the anniversary. The anniversary about to come up, but for the one year anniversary for the damn music video. But anyway, so the second single was uh "Can't Leave You Alone." Um, "Can't Leave You Alone" is basically inspired by Jodeci. Um, Feenan. Um, it has a nostalgia vibe to it. Um, it's trap soul. Um, so yeah, I released that one. You got that one out there, whatever you know. And then uh, the third one was time. Time was influenced by uh, Erica Badu and CeeLo Green. Um, pretty much you know, R and B funk rock soul type of thing. You know, um, a lot of high notes and and sass and see, just just. You know, don't waste my time. Like you just, you just, that's basically with the more of the story. You know what I'm saying? You, you go chill with a chick or, you know, a guy, you know, and you chilling. And next thing you know, the fuck you called me over here for you. And you called me over here and I've been mm -hmm. knocking on the door and I could have stayed at home watching Good Time, watching Martin or, you know, watching Martin. Person, yeah. Fucking with my vibe. You know what I'm saying? Like you, yeah, hell yeah. And I come over here, you on the phone the whole time and, the whole time you're on the phone and all you the only thing we did was meet each other at the door and you open the door. Did you even say fucking hey? So what the <laughs> fuck am I here for? Yeah. So, you know, it's 
very simple meaning, you know. And then, uh, of course, the fourth one was um, floor. Floor was um, inspired by the housing um, and also for the gay community and stuff like that. I haven't I only performed floor once because it I even, want to do it floor. sounds like you're a completely different artist on that song. Right, right. Amazing I, song, I, though. Yeah, like it, it, it is weird. Um, <laughs> and the funny thing about it, um, People ask me too, um, are all my songs produced by the same person? No. Um, it's like that was produced by um the Beat Dungeon, Calvin. Um, he's on my page and stuff. I tag him in just about everything. Um I'm Good was produced was produced. I'm good is was produced by Calvin as well. Um, so I'm good time it's like that was produced by the same person. Calvin. Um, Calvin Lats Laster, I can't even get his fucking name right. The Beat Dungeon. Yeah. See you next Tuesday music. Um, out here in the 757 uh Virginia Beach area. Um, and I had Can't Leave You Alone produced by um a lovely lovely lady lady by the name of Um Doshi Pro. Um, I believe she's worked with Coco from SWV and a few other people and stuff like that, but she's not, you know, she's not out there, out there like that. You know, she's real chill. Um, and Floor was produced by this guy named Calvin uh, Mirage. So he's uh, he's produced for a lot of people out here. And also, I believe he's produced or co-produced for a lot of people um, outside of here um, who are big names or independent names and stuff like that, um, I believe. So, um, yeah. So all of my stuff is done by, you know, different people. That's what I always like to work with different people for different sounds but yeah yeah bro uh like i said when we started this uh your sounds amazing um it's been a pleasure to have you on bro and uh to get to know you through this interview like i said when i first heard your voice bro uh amazing talent just, just pretty much just in the distance waiting for someone to discover um so i'm glad that i could give you the platform and bring some exposure your way um, if there's anything that I could do for you, bro, after this, uh, you have my number, feel free to contact me. 